Hi, welcome to Nikki's vlog. Today, women and business. When women thrive, businesses thrive is the title of a report produced by the global HR giant Mercer. And I think it's a fascinating report and well worth reading the 28 pages, including some of the findings. The principal one of which is we are on track to close the gender pay divide in 118 years. And maybe we should do something about that. One of the things I find quite interesting and encouraging about the report is on the first page there is this paragraph. I'd like to draw your attention to this sentence. It's a business imperative with deep and profound social implications. We're talking about advancing gender, gender diversity in management teams and businesses in general. And my observation is it assumes that this is true. And therefore, we also assume that everybody agrees. And my observation is the privileged elite rarely agree with having their privilege removed. And so the elite men who are running most of our businesses are not necessarily sold on the idea that they should undermine their privilege by voting for an, uh, an equity in the genders. Now, they're not going to say anything because obviously sitting in a meeting and saying I should earn more than her because I'm male is probably not going to go down very well. So what happens is most men negatively comply. They sit there and pay lip service. They say they're going to do things. They say they're going to make things equal. But then in actual fact, they only listen to the boys. They only listen to the men. They only respond to male suggestions and male comments. So this vlog is an argument for why those men ought to listen to the women and promote the women in the business and close the pay gap, not because it's good for women, but because it's good for men. Deep in the report, page 26, there's this paragraph. I think this is fascinating. I'm going to read it to you. Our research finds that women have different and unique skills relative to men, skills that are considered critical to career success. What are those skills? I wondered. Most of my blogs are all about that, in fact, about how actually maybe girls have the skills that we miss in our management teams that might make our management teams more effective. I'll come back to this in a second, but I ran a little experiment today. I went to Google Images and I Googled boys playing. And this is what I got. Boys playing, I got all of these images of kids playing. Now, obviously, some of you know that I coach rugby, so some of these are quite close to my heart. You'll see the first one. This is two people playing rugby, and clearly, you know, they're against each other on opposite teams. That made me think that maybe we should look at all of the photographs and see how many of these are encouraging boys to play against each other versus those that are encouraging boys to play with each other. So I've got A for against and I've labeled T for together and I've gone through all of these images and labeled which ones are about playing together and which ones are about playing against each other. And on a Google search, do it yourself, you'll get different images depending on what country you're in. You're in I suspect what you're gonna find is lots more red for boys playing against each other than T's. My inference from that is actually, and I see this every day, we're very good at encouraging young boys to play competitively against other boys. Well, what happens if I change the search and I Google search girls playing? How I get a very different set of photographs. Actually, one of them is uh, in both sets, which I thought was very interesting. Um, this one here has a girl actually playing football with the boys. We like that, but it's still, they're competing to try and get after the ball. So if I label these the same, T for when girls are playing together, notice this one is a football team, I think, but it's a shot of the team, it's not a shot of them playing against somebody else. And now we've got a very green picture, much more encouraging girls to collaborate, to team, to work together than the alternative for the boys. So, as a straw poll, as a research, it's perhaps not scientifically proven, but here's what it shows. It shows quite conclusively to me that when men our age were boys, they were probably actively encouraged to play in a more competitive, combative role. I was a kid and I was given a sword and told to go and play cops and robbers, play knights, go and, go and fight, fight, win, get the girl as a, comp as, a, as a prize. And that's the way I was taught to play when I was four and five. Whereas I strongly suspect most of my girlfriends were actively encouraged to play together. 
nine times the number of images that were there in Google encouraging girls to play nicely together as a team and work together than the one that was about that team then competing against somebody else. And I coach rugby, so I know all about how boys play and what goes on with them. But the other day, I watched my daughter playing netball in an all-girl team. And every time they won, there was lots of high-fiving and hugging and kissing and celebrating the win. And when they lost, they didn't cheer the other team when, the other, when they won. What they did was console the other team. There was lots of patting people on the back who had lost and say, never mind, thanks for playing. Nothing you see on the rugby pitch. So if you take these two numbers, okay, 9 to 1 against versus 3 to 1 for, and we were to compare from a male versus female stance, how do we teach boys and girls to play? What we'd have to do is normalize the girls' data for the boys' data and find out that 27 times more likely to find images of collaboration versus the one image of collaboration for the men. I think that's probably indicative of the fact that men are 27 more times likely to compete with their colleagues than women who are 27 times more likely to collaborate with their competition. How does that then impact management? Well, I think it impacts it fairly obviously. Men are about combative, competitive winning. We are taught that we have to protect and provide. That's our role as a boy. Whereas actually, the evidence I think is quite overwhelmingly suggests that women are better managers than men precisely because their games when they were kids were all about collaboration and care, teaming, playing together, playing nicely in the sales pit, sand pit with everybody else. And on the whole, 20 years ago, maybe what we needed to survive in business was people who were competitive and combative. I must win this deal and beat my competitors. And now I have to work with them and I have to nurture people and bring them on. And this is the skill set that's missing in our management teams. So my observation is not only do women have different and unique skills relative to men that are considered critical to career success, I think they should be considered critical to business success. And if you see that, and if you appreciate that, that's why we need women to thrive, because our businesses will thrive. And then this report does a really good job of telling you how you do that. I just think it's missing the why should we. At least that's what I think. I'd really like to know what you think. So please go to my website, www.nickytake.com at Nicky Take, Nicky Take on Twitter, slash Nicky Take on Facebook, or subscribe to my YouTube channel, and in the comments, please, tell me what you think. Should we promote women because it's the right thing to do, or should we, compo should we promote women because it will make us more successful? Thanks for watching. Bye.